Hi guys, welcome to the shop. Today we're making incel armor. Incel armor for the music video of The Gentleman. If you haven't seen that one, there's a link in the description down below. So my friend Mistfane made a design based on Dark Souls and now we're going to create it in EVA foam. Mistfane already provided me with patterns for the helmet, which helps me a lot because it's a pretty intricate design. I am using low density black foam for the more organic shapes like the dome and high density grey foam for the more sturdy parts like the visor. I glue everything together with contact cement or super glue. I also got some nice blue feathers, for which I made a small adjustment on the back of the helmet. Her wizard finished up the helmet so we can finally start making the sword. Now for the sword we're going for a two-handed design with a little bit of a keyblade in there. Simply because, you know, we're not compensating for anything. Let's just start making the pattern. After freehanding some patterns for the sword, we cut it out from the high density foam. At the base of the sword, we use the PVC pipe and some fiberglass rods. Dremeling the edges of the sword would take up too much time, so instead we used foam bevels that we can just glue to the base to get some sharp looking edges. When we got to the base, we just glued on the extra detail in 5 and 2 mm foam. For the torso, we're going to start with a basic Ornstein pattern that we found the line and divided into many pieces. It's okay to start from a pattern that you found on the internet because you can learn a lot from it and you can always modify it if necessary. The torso consists out of two parts. A simple base that I drew from moist measurements and an Ornstein-like armor. The Ornstein-like armor took up more time since I used Pepakuro patterns. But once you have the patterns, you're already halfway there. We test fit the armor on the cameraman, since he kinda has the same measurements as moist. So we want to upgrade our armor and give it some extra stat boosts. And we're gonna do that by implementing LEDs. For that we're gonna use yeah, LED foam. Oh. LED foam, which you can just buy at cosplay shop. Now, we're gonna simply attach the LEDs inside the armor by using super glue and just putting a couple of dots in there so that the LED foam is nudged in there a little bit so that we can still reach the electronics if necessary. And that's basically it. While Mistfane works on the torso, I focus on the arms and legs of the costume. For the gauntlets, I use black foam, but leave a little gap with added velcro so that the size can be adjusted. After heat forming, I often put the foam in a cylinder to give it a permanent curve. The arm and leg parts are pretty much done in the same way. Oh. 
Herb Wizard also laser cut some really cool ornaments and references that we can use all over the armor. Ornaments with moist droplets, details that spell out certain words if you look close enough, and other nice references that we will use later on in the build. Hey Herb, you know what would look cool on the armor? Some chainmail. Yeah, but we don't have time for that. Oh yeah. But he does. For the chainmail, I used aluminum wire that we spun around a metal rod. After this, I can cut off the rings with a wire cutter. I wouldn't recommend this for a full torso chainmail because it would not be able to support its own weight. But since it's only a skirt, we should be fine. Once I cut about a thousand rings, I used pliers to put them all together. This took me around 10 hours to make, so another tip I have is to just buy the chainmail online. While they work on the foam parts, I'll be doing my thing, fabrics. We decided on making a gambus on that moist can wear underneath the armor. This will ensure that the whole costume will look a lot more designed through layers. For this, we got some hexagon shaped fabric and plutter. Once you've finished all the foam pieces, one of the most important steps is going to be attaching them. Because if you don't attach them, it will look very, well, you know, sloppy. So to avoid that, we're going to use buckles. And you can definitely buy these buckles in the shop. And we use these buckles in the PewDiePie armor, and they were perfect for that project. But in this project, we're trying to look at things differently, a bit more medieval. So. We're gonna make our own leather buckles by using fake leather and some buckles we bought online. Priming and painting a prop or armor is the most crucial step of the whole build. This can make or break the finished look. 
We start with priming every single piece with Plasti Dip until no foam is left uncovered. To our surprise we noticed that the shine was not what we expected. So we added additional layers of flex bond. In hindsight, we should have done this in the first place. Once the new primer was applied, we could finally spray some Allclad 2 chrome on all the pieces. It made everything nice and shiny. The final step of the build is creating a sense of realism throughout the armor by using weathering. We just use oil paint that we apply in all nooks and crannies of the armor. And then afterwards we simply wipe it off. Now there is only one thing left to do, try out the armor and fill it with all sorts of gadgets that we think Moist will really appreciate. And that's a wrap, it's time to showcase the armor on our photoshoot location, which is none other than the Castle of the Counts in the city centre of Ghent. The team has created something extremely special with this mythic armor set here. Not only can it block penetrating thrust attempts, blunt force damage, block bullets, it can also block rejection. If you're wearing shit like this out in public, there's no way you're not getting laid. It is truly just an incredible, remarkable design. Sleek, sporty, playful, and intimidating. Exactly what I needed. And that concludes the build of the Moist Armor. I really want to thank the guys that made this whole build possible, which are Herb Wizard, Jerushi, and Sky Shark. And of course, the cosplay shop select style. Because without their help, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.